through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 157. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're talking time travel movies yes. in honor of the limited release mm -hmm. of Safety Not Guaranteed. Yes. This is the time traveling uh, adventure that mm -hmm. has made big news thus far this year. Yes. And finally getting its limited release. Mm -hmm. But in honor of that, we're going to go back in time. <laughs> I see what you <laughs> yeah. To talk time travel movies. <laughs> and there's so many that we could talk about. Oh, yeah. Please don't jump on our. Um, emails and just start flaming us or do or do yeah let us know your favorites then mm -hmm. but there's so many we try we we, we picked a limited number because mm -hmm. of we're trying to keep this yes. time sensitive yes. <laughs> um uh, that being said the first one we're going to talk about is an interesting one because it's been an ongoing series that's mm -hmm. gone so many different directions yes. and that is terminator yes the james cameron series mm -hmm. or at least james cameron starred series yes. about a man who goes back in time to save a woman from a killer cyborg. time traveling robot what do you want to call it robot. robot robot's good yeah. robot. i like cyborg does that imply he's human though yeah it it's got some human skin, skin though you know yeah. anyway this is the arnold schwarzenegger <laughs> classic yeah, um, linda hamilton as well linda hamilton michael bean yes before he was any number of other parts uh -huh. <laughs> leave it nice and vague this is this is an interesting one though because this is the first one in the series mm -hmm. and it wasn't so much an action series mm -mm. at this point it was there's a lot of action in the yeah. movie but it was more of a thriller yeah, definitely and arnold was the villain in yeah. this one which is quite a twist from the way the rest of the mm -hmm. series went yeah uh i mean what are, what are your thoughts about the original terminator oh the original terminator it's such a great film it was such a compact good interesting film especially obviously after the sequel came out was a very nice yeah the but, sequel's great. but it, it, it's very much by itself uh, a good solid time travel story because all of the things that you would normally need to answer why and how of the time travel mm -hmm. are still in the future where it's mm -hmm. there the people who are sent back don't have the ability to that's return a great again. point yeah that's a great point. so you can completely leave all everything about society about and all the things that would happen if people had time travel and who controls it and what Huck those all out the window and just have people in the now. And fish out of water stories are always awesome. That's a great point. Uh, side point, mm. quickly. Reading the summary right here. Mm -hmm. Mentioned Cyborg. So, points <laughs> okay. for Spencer. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> no, that's a great point, though. It really it really is interesting. And also, you got to give a shout-out to Arnold being a villain. Yeah. How often do you see that? I mean, yeah, not very it's often. one of those things with like famous actors mm -hmm. that once you get to a certain level of fame, basically, you don't want to be a villain. I mean, exactly. I guess you think like maybe... Like Bruce the, Willis. Yeah, I mean Bruce. I it's mean, it's been since the, the Jackal, Jackal but that, that was a while ago. I mean, it was like post. That was around Die Hard. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. A, that's pretty late in his career. Yeah, but he really hasn't done it since. You're mm -hmm. right, and I mean, Stallone. I can't really think of a Stallone villain role. Yeah. I mean, or off the top of my head, that's but like maybe good. the Expendables is sort of an example of like you know people coming eh. back to be villains like Jean Claude Van Damme being yeah. the villain in this one. Yeah, I guess. To I mean, e either way, it's not something that's common, mm -hmm. and who knows when the next time you'll possibly see that because mm -hmm. it's it's just famous people like to be heroes yeah. and being a hero makes you more bankable Definitely. so it's really not a very common thing to see yeah. super famous people do it so mm -hmm. it's cool to see that i i dig the film it's Agreed. it's a, a lot of fun and very different from terminator 2 so yes. i definitely enjoyed in a whole separate mm -hmm. category into itself uh arguably the most famous example yeah, of this or most, most popular example yeah. of it is back to the future indeed this is the michael j fox series about a kid who uh is friends with a older scientist yeah. <laughs> not gonna really get into the curiosity of that yes, relationship in a, in a way that looks very strange in retrospect yes post post 90s yes post post uh, <laughs> rise of like the catholic yeah, uh, like church yeah. scandals and yes, whatnot yes uh <laughs> Anyway, it's very, very um, <laughs> squeaky clean. Yes, um, yes, yes. But he's friends with this scientist who has this creation of a time machine. Mm -hmm. Things go crazy. Mm -hmm. He ends up going back in time. Yes. Has to figure out a way to get back to yes, the future. Yes, because the, the si Doc Brown is killed. Yes, in Christopher front of Lloyd. Him. Yes. Yes. And so he tries to go back also to maybe hopefully save Doc Brown. 
Yes. Yes. Do, 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 do. <laughs> 88 miles an hour, man. This made the DeLorean famous. Yes, like There is definitely. such a nostalgia for DeLoreans, even to this day. I- interest, interesting uh, little tidbit that blows my mind in thinking the facts that, like, just recently the Avengers was kicked out of number one in America, and it was a number one for, like, four or five weeks, something mm-hmm. like that. And, you know, you've had movies like Avatar and big movies. When Back to the Future came out, it was the number one movie in America for something like... It held the record for many, many years, like 20-something years. It was the record... Uh, number one movie in America for over 25 weeks, if I remember correctly. Like, half of the year. Wow, that's 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 weird and hard to believe, simply because its worldwide gross was $350 million. So either it was, like, nothing big coming out... Seriously, it, like, like... It cruised through, like, $5 million each week. Like, I, it, I, I mean, I'd have to double-check the facts. It might be less than that, but I remember when I first seeing it being... It's it's at least 20 weeks that it was the that's number crazy. one movie in America. Can you imagine that, a movie being number one movie in America for almost half of a year or more than half of the year? Like, you'd still go... It's still playing in marquees, like, six months later. Yeah, that's, that's hard to imagine. Crazy. That is hard to imagine. We will we will verify facts. And put the, put something. <laughs> put something down here with but the actual number is. Yeah, Greg was wrong uh, or website. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a really interesting statistic if it's true. Like that's crazy to think about. But it's it's such a beloved series. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I think it's probably so beloved because it's relatable yeah like it, it's michael j fox plays a sort of great everyman and, and it makes time travel again not like the most complicated thing yeah. in the world he's not the creator of it he doesn't he's understand just operating it. the machine so you know and it uses it in a sort of adventure mm-hmm. kind of way in that he's sort of like he goes back i mean do you remember timeline the mm-hmm. Michael Crichton book, mm-hmm. sort of similar to that. Like, he's thrust back into a foreign land. Yeah. And he has to sort of fish out of water his way out of there. Mm-hmm. With his own family. Oh, uh, glad. Oof, thank God he didn't go down that route, man. <laughs> that is a creepy... Or did he? Bum, bum, bum. I don't know. Okay. No, he definitely didn't. Okay. <laughs> Crispin Glover was his father, yes. and he's creepy enough as yes. is. That yes. explains plenty. Like, Which is amazing well, to think that Crispin Glover would... Ch- you know, have somebody like Michael J. Fox as a child. It's like abnormal to normal. Doesn't seem like that's the way it should go. Yeah, to be fair, he wasn't actually Crispin Glover. <laughs> well, I know, though. but still, it's, still it's just, the genetics even, were there. It's even just weirder to see Crispin Glover in mainstream movies. Yes, that's, that's the worst true. thing of all. Let's move on though mm-hmm. to another '80s classic, yep. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Love it's that outrageous. Movie. Yeah, love that movie. Wild Stallions. Yeah. Wild Stallions. <laughs> well, I wish I had worn that t-shirt. That would have been perfect. I even have that t-shirt. That's true. You do. Yeah. Forget. It's the classic Keanu Reeves, Alex Winters film mm-hmm. about two uh, slacker high school students who end up going back in time for their final project mm-hmm. to... co oh, starring George Carlin. Yes, is Rufus. Uh-huh. And he is sort of their Mental spirit guide. animal guide, yeah, if you yeah, will, yeah. who he needs to help them out because they ultimately end up being these giant like influential mm-hmm. peacemaker leaders yes. in the future and without their without their yeah. help, history grade or whatever it is that they need to yeah they will yeah. never they'll never form the band wild stallions they'll never uh, rock and never they'll never save the world they will never save the world and it's so interesting to sort of a get a history lesson which mm-hmm. the film essentially gives yeah and it's sort of very much boiled down yeah. Yeah, in a very loose approach. way. But it's also kind of, it's an adventure, it's a friend, a sort of buddy mm-hmm. adventure. Like, it's got so many good things mm-hmm. going for it. Sadly, the sequel was not quite as good. What are you talking about? Bogus Journey was awesome. It was Don't not- be bad Bogus, Bogus Journey. Journey cannot even touch Excellent Adventure with a Candle. And if they had uh, made my third proposed uh, variant of the film, in, in college I wrote a... Uh, <laughs> Uh, what did I wrote? It was uh, it was something like Spencer's fan fiction. No, I, I we had Bill a... and Ted and Spencer go on an awesome adventure. <laughs> no, it was something like that. That was like it was like Bill and Ted bodacious uh, journey or something like that. I don't even remember. I'd have to look. Bogus it up. journey was awesome. Them playing Twister with death. Come on, man, that's great stuff. It was, it was what was it like? Awesome adventure or something alliterative? I remember that. I, I even went out and like scouted out, scouted out like phone booths and stuff for the class. It was great. Anyway. Um, maybe, Let's go. Yeah, maybe I'm just uh, holding a grudge, but I, I definitely. I think you are. Excellent adventure is so much better than Bogus Journey, though. That doesn't mean Bogus Journey is bad. It means it's worse, though. So. <laughs> so the Matrix. So New Hope is worse than Empire Strikes Back. That doesn't mean New Hope is bad. But you're going up then in that case. <laughs> this, this you're going down. Like it's like more like Reloaded to the Matrix. 
it's not anywhere near that bad. Come on. I think it is. But again, Write in, let us know. Again, time travel machine somebody else brings in. And to use a phone booth, really interesting. Yeah, well, you know, TARDIS. Yeah, I guess they did rip that off, isn't it? But still a really interesting No, no, idea. definitely. It's not It's not done in a way that seems rip off. It's not bigger on the inside. None of the other weird things. It's just, you know, there. Yeah. One of the more quirky examples mm, of time travel, though, probably one of my was favorite. One of, yeah, one of my favorites as well. Twelve Monkeys, mm-hmm. the Terry M. Gilliam film, uh, about a you know a virus outbreak that occurs in the future, mm-hmm. and a man who's sort of sent to figure out how exactly it occurs and mm-hmm. figure out how they can you know stop it yes. from occurring. This is the uh, Bruce Willis starring mm-hmm. film, as well as Brad Pitt oh, in a yeah. crazy, kooky role, which so he actually good. was nominated for an Academy Award for supporting good. actor, which he is should. Kind of it's one of my favorite Brad Pitt roles. Yeah. This is a crazy, sort of quirky film in non-linear. traditional. Non linear. Non linear. Uh, it's also traditional, sort of Terry Gilliam film, mm-hmm. where it's really sort of out there in terms of visual mm-hmm. style. The characters are really kooky. Based on a French short film, La Jete, which is a great. Great film. That, Have you, you've seen this yeah, original film? Yeah. Yeah, it's black and white. It's about, uh, I want to say it's under 30 minutes, but maybe more than f- 10. I'm, I forget exactly the length. It's all still images, and it's this... Really? They have this device in the future that allows people to see into the past, but only uh, single images, not motion. So the whole film is told through images with voiceover. It's not hmm. actually animated, but... The whole, with if you haven't seen the movie without giving anything away, the whole weird dream state ending of twi- of Twelve Monkeys, mm. dream state that's consistent through the movie and the ending, that is very very much directly the La Jete story. But it's also it's that sort friendship. of concept of yeah, like can, can you uh, self fulfilling prophecies and so all that right? Or just manipulate, change mm-hmm. things, or, or is it destiny that's mm-hmm. going to happen no matter what? Sort of and yeah, it really it's good good mm-hmm. good good brain food for that yeah you know? really good uh it's the peer is what i think it is in french yeah that sadly he did not uh brad pitt did not win best uh he should have i guess yeah best supporting actor would have been really would have been really interesting but mm-hmm. you know this is funny to think about you know brad pitt in terms mm-hmm. of acting 20 almost 20 years yeah. ago and he's still i mean arguably as good as ever now mm-hmm. with nominations for Moneyball and stuff just yeah. last year. So. Oh, that was a great film. Yeah. So, anyway, we're going to skip forward into the aughts. Mm-hmm. Start that off with a bang and the directorial debut mm-hmm. of Richard Kelly. Should have been maybe the directorial finale as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Donnie Darko. <laughs> Including before the director's cut. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Some people are just not... <laughs> need to be reined in. Yeah. He's sort of my example for that. Mm-hmm. This is the story of a kid who... Um, becomes conscious of time travel and ultimately through his life kind of wants to go back and change time Mm -hmm. and it's it's kind of a quirky again non-linear type story and knows when the when how much longer he has left to live yes and it's sort of why that countdown is significant Mm -hmm. and how that timeline mm-hmm. is affected by you know actions, the future and stuff events like. that you don't you know about but you don't know about, and how you're right present exactly. Event. This future events yeah. set these countdowns mm-hmm. in motion, but he doesn't know what they are yet. And it's sort of it's a really interesting sort of play on time because it's not traditional mm-hmm. time travel. It's Definitely. not like he goes forward in time or mm-hmm. back in time, um, though there is a little bit of that in sort of the whole concept mm-hmm. of the film but it's not traditional like moving through time yeah. to change time yeah. sort of it's definitely an interesting kind of cause and effect style but it's a really a really creative idea unfortunately the director's cut sort of um kind of hammered you in the face with it yeah and took away some of the sort of mystery of yeah. the and delight film. mystery yeah. and delight the organization of it before was a little bit more um cohesive mm-hmm. if you ask me it became definitely. a little bit more exaggerated and, and little bogged down at some spots. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so. The music cues were changed, stuff yeah. like that. It was it was it's a great first feature. Mm-hmm. Um understandably it was nominated for a slew of independent spirit mm-hmm. awards, best first feature, best first screenplay, uh best male lead for Jake Gyllenhaal. Mm-hmm. Oh, he was great. It was nominated for the Grand Jury Prize at uh Sundance mm-hmm. in two thousand and one. I remember seeing it in the theater and being blown away. I remember renting it, being told when I rented it by a friend who never gives me suggestions and only really suggests really good things, said, go rent this movie and don't read the back. Don't try to figure out Mm -hmm. anything about what the movie's about. Just Mm -hmm. go rent it and put it in and watch it. 
which is something that never happens anymore. You know, yeah, we, that's the, the not, internet. Kills I would it. never think like I would go to my Netflix queue and I would see the explanation right there as I clicked it or my cable. I just yeah. I wouldn't. I don't think about that anymore. Of like internet killed the video star. I don't know. I feel like there's something. <clears throat> <laughs> There's something awkward. There. Um, no, but yeah, interesting time travel. It's really different sort of use of time travel, and I think that's that's cool that mm-hmm. people are trying different things mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. going different places. And that's a perfect cue into the next one, which is also an independent film as well. Yes, Primer, the, the best time travel movie in my opinion. Really, the of best. all time. <laughs> Whoa. Yes, uh, we're talking about the Shane Carruth film. Oh my god. Uh, this is one of those films, much like Monsters, that mm, came out mm-hmm. in recent years, where one dude really did everything. Yeah. He was director, writer, producer, composer, production designer, editor, as well as the star of the film. Yes. <laughs> and it's kind of amazing to think about. this. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a full-on time travel independent film. Mm-hmm. This is your favorite film. Please do tell why. Well, okay, so f- first off, you have uh, people who actually whether accidentally or on purpose, invent a time travel machine. Second, even watching it, you could never understand why. It's Mm. so complicated, so deep into science, so deep into things you would already need to understand even have got to where they got beforehand, Mm -hmm. that it's not a simple, we put these things together and hit on, and then we could travel through time. It's a very, very complicated scientific process. That they're able to reproduce, reproduce, Mm -hmm. which is just scientifically the most interesting way you could do time travel. Add with that probably the most convoluted and complex plot that if you ever see, there's an image online of the full breakdown of the primer timelines and how everything is going. And the image is literally so big you can't read the text because to see the whole image, you have to zoom out enough that you're like... Oh my god, and then you spend, you know, two and a half hours reading it. If you're very lucky at the end of reading that, you go, I understand the whole movie now. So that time travel should is for me should always be complicated. Mm. So this movie is incredibly it. complicated and completely scientifically plausible. It's not a magic phone booth. It's not a lamp that a genie right. Right. comes out of. You know, it's I just I love you know somebody being so. I mean, you talk about auteurs. Like this is an example of somebody truly being an auteur mm-hmm. in terms of like everything is dependent upon him. Mm-hmm. And I forget how much it costs to make. I think seven thousand dollars is what yes, I see estimated, something, something which is absurd yeah. to think about. And it's kind of a shame. I mean, the dude was nominated for again, much like Richard Kelly, mm-hmm. best uh, feature, mm-hmm. best director, best first screenplay, um, best. There's a best debut performance for David Sullivan, one mm-hmm. of the the other actors in the movie Mm -hmm. as well as you know sundance as well he won the grand jury prize unlike richard kelly good and he won a special uh feature film prize as well as the director writer of it so awesome it i mean it went where no other and uh film had gone before the the movie i wanted to bring up in general is a great time to bring it up in relation looper which is coming out later Mm -hmm. rian johnson worked with shane caruth on uh, the original concept and dealing with some of... When when he had the base idea, the two of them talked a lot. And Mm -hmm. it's like, if you're going to make a time travel movie and you talk to the guy who worked on Primer, that's a pretty good source to make sure you're going to have an interesting time travel movie. And it's sort of sad, though, in some ways, because Shane Carruth really has not done anything else. Supposedly this year he has his next... Oh, um, coming out something called Upstream Color, which I've heard hmm. nothing about. Me neither. But I mean, that's basically up. eight years. Yeah, he's sort of been floating in the wind, and it's a shame that really yeah. he hasn't got anything out there because the dude oh, is man. definitely interesting and def- movie's so amazing. Definitely like to see what he could do with some more money behind mm-hmm. him. Moving to the opposite end of the spectrum, <laughs> though, uh, same year, strangely enough, hmm. the biggest possible example or one of the biggest possible examples of time travel, mm. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Ah, uh, yes. Arguably the best of the Harry Potter movies. The Time Turner. Yes. This is the story, you know, of Harry Potter. <laughs> and he's... <laughs> the British boy wizard. Fighting Lord Voldemort. But this is... I believe this is pre really Voldemort becoming materialized at this point. Yeah, this is the for the release of the Dementors. Yes. Uh, this is the... Uh, Gary the, Oldman debut. The Gary Oldman debut, as was it? His character was... Uh, Sirius Black? Yes. Good memory. I've read all the books. So. There you go. I should have known. <laughs> this is the one directed by Alfonso Cuaron, yes. though. His sort of mm-hmm. really big breakout mm-hmm. after E2 Mama Tambien. I believe, yes. Is that right? Is that right order? Yeah. E2 Mama Tambien. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Or- and your mother also. 
Yeah. That's what that is in Spanish. But I'm trying to remember what the actual order of the words yeah, was. I even yeah. stuff. Um, High school Spanish. Pre-Children um, of Men, all mm-hmm. that craziness, but excellent, excellent film. It's probably the darkest, or one yeah. of the darkest of the Harry Potter yeah. series. It's really interesting use of time travel in terms of telling the story. Mm-hmm. At the same time, you have this serious black plot line mm-hmm. going forward where he looks like a villain, and he's actually mm-hmm. a good guy. and So much darker than the pre- in, t- in visual oh, yeah. tone than the, first, than the two by Columbus that yes. you, just, you felt those Dementors coming out. That was sort like, of like the first point I was like, okay, this is a Harry Potter I can get on board yeah. with. This isn't like a saccharine little kid story. This is like an actual interesting story about good and evil. And how did it? Do you remember how it compared to the book? Was it? Was it? It, it was. It was. If I remember correctly, this is when the books were shorter too. So it probably yeah. More... I, 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 I. It's been so long since I read the book. I forget how similar it was in mm. comparison. I'm not a super fan that's reread them a bunch of time and critiques all the things that are different. But as far as I know, it was pretty pretty close on par but i don't remember right after there's i mean i think you know sirius black has got to be one of the best characters in the harry potter series i think it was a really interesting spin to sort of give harry potter a new perspective on uh his parents Mm -hmm. and sort of their history yeah as well as sort of the twist of you know who is good who is bad bad guys people look bad Mm -hmm. or good good people are or people look good or bad yeah Sirius Black is set up in the book as well as totally as this horrible malicious villain I mean he's a a dark wolf he looks he looks bad he acts bad he's got a name that sounds like a bad guy name I mean he's just everything set up that way and so the turn of him being a good guy at the end of that book is very and the movie as well is very uh Heroic. I mean, you know, you're watching it, especially with someone like Gary Oldman. He can play the mm. hero and the villain. If you didn't so know, well, yeah. like, it's not like seeing Gary Oldman. You're like, oh, cool. It's well, not, him. Not only he's that, but like, he's guy. crazy. Yeah. And so he's sort of like, yeah. even when you know one side or the other, he's still sort of like <laughs> unpredictable and kooky. So it's it's definitely one of the most mm-hmm. interesting characters he's played, and uh, my favorite probably of the the Harry Potter series. Mm-hmm. So time travel on top of that. Yeah. Awesome. I mean. Granted, it's sort of wizardry time yeah, yeah. travel, so it's sort of like you don't actually need the logic behind mm-hmm. it per se. You yeah. just be like, it's a potion or whatever, yeah, you know? Yeah, exactly. We have this device, and when we do this thing, time goes backwards. Yeah. So it's kind of the easiest out in terms yeah. of time travel, but yeah. it still it still adds an interesting dimension as they're sort of watching themselves through the yeah. story. Like, and it's not over. It's not overdone like a consistent thing that comes back like from then on all the kids can cast time travel spells. Right. Like, but I also I mean also it's sort of interesting to sort of see time travel movies and this is something we really mm. haven't talked about in these ones where you're sort of watching yourself uh, yes. occur during the movie mm-hmm. where it's sort of like that I don't know paradox time mm-hmm. paradox or whatever yeah. well you know somebody who's actually like a time travel snob might argue that that might not be possible well, it's, or would well, it's be possible. They're, I think it's because they're invisible if they were visible. Right, but it's sort of it's still that paradox of, you know, like, just being there, how mm-hmm. does things be affected? Yeah, sort of yeah. like As long as you don't touch, that's generally where you get into tricky time paradoxes if you touch. Right, that seems like a really weird, like, arbitrary point to just, I mean, your mirror Not exists. Really. It's like the butterfly effect, though. Just, <laughs> you're there, one, like, little, like, was it a dust particle? No, I'm saying you touch so- your yourself in a different time. Like, right, and I'm, you just, know. I'm just saying, just the mere fact that you're impacting time should influence something. So, anyway, <laughs> it's a whole other episode discussing time travel. Maybe we'll get it there some other time. That brings us to this Friday, June. A, mm-hmm. we're talking safety not guaranteed, mm-hmm. limited release unfortunately, so hopefully the rest of you outside of, I believe it's Portland Seattle, New York maybe mm-hmm. LA, outside of that hopefully you'll be getting it soon enough we hope for your sake this is the story of a guy who places an ad in Craigslist mm-hmm. or whatever looking for a time travel partner yes, and some newspaper right. reporters who go after mm-hmm. him to sort of figure out what is the deal with this guy mm-hmm. and this is uh what Aubrey Plaza Aubrey um, Plaza the, the, the person who places the ad is Mark Duplass yes that's right Aubrey Plaza plays an intern along with Jake Johnson who's the reporter right. yes, who yes. goes in search of this guy okay. set in sort of Washington State mm-hmm. I believe Ocean mm-hmm. Shore specifically nice the reporters for Seattle Magazine okay cool so very very local tie ooh nice it's it's just a beautiful sort of story about, you know, faith mm-hmm. and sort of uh, 
what you believe Got regardless it. of what is plausible or not and what ultimately is sort of like fate versus determination and mm. sort of all sorts of stuff like Neat. that it's a really interesting thoughtful film you saw this at south by southwest i saw right? it at south by southwest you know it's playing at sif for those of you who are going to it at sif or nice. probably already have been to it at sif mm, at this mm-hmm, point mm-hmm. um it won the waldo uh salt screenwriting award at sundance nice. was nominated for the grand jury prize as well um just an amazing amazing film i hope people go check it out because this is the kind of smaller budget film that really mm-hmm. deserve yeah. money and it's amazing to think about this is probably you know a low million dollar film mm-hmm. versus something like battleship that had 200 million dollars yeah. and this is so much better oh, in terms definitely. of story uh-huh. creativity acting all that it's mm-hmm. just breakout breakout role for aubrey plaza's mm-hmm. her sort of lead debut and a non sort of just comedy jokey role yeah. um mark duplass's always is killing it oh, i mean I this is so like much. a breakout year for him as well because he's in every movie mm-hmm. that's coming out or directing it yeah and great supporting work by uh jake johnson and karen sony mm. um who have another sort of parallel story that's going gotcha. on at the same time that has its own sort of time travel hmm. spin interesting not going to explain how that is mm. we don't have to watch the movie for you. but uh stay tuned uh for a interview with the director of the film we'll karen trevaro who was in town for Seth. Just saying. (laughs) (laughs) So, anyway, check that out Mm -hmm. and stay tuned for our next episode where we talk about Ridley Scott in honor of Prometheus. (laughs) Very talented guy, yeah. And, uh, as always, let us know your feedback at Mm MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes, Miro, Roku, Blip. We're uh, everywhere. And check in at Get Glue, because we like that. It mm-hmm. strokes our egos. <laughs> get sticky at Get Glue. I don't want to even if that's think not about there, what you mean there. If that's not there, we're not gonna, it should we're not, be. We're not going there. We're not going okay. there. Okay. We'll see you next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. It's tight, don't even try to bite the side style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.